There's something to be said about the unconventional, especially in the smartphone world. LG is one of those companies that has been doing unconventional for a long time. This is the LG G5, and there's a whole lot about it that frankly isn't normal, that nobody else is doing. Let's go take a look. This is our official LG G5 review. So this is it, this is the LG G5. Let's start out with the basics. We have a 5.3 inch diagonal display that's actually a little bit smaller than the LG G4 by a whole tenth of an inch, so don't lose too much sleep over that. It's still an IPS LCD display, and it's decent. It's not as sharp as AMOLED panels that we'll see on other phones, but it gets the job done and it's plenty bright. One of the really cool things about this display is it's just one piece of glass. No seams until you get down here on the bottom. This is the removable module. We'll get to that in a second. But you have one piece of glass that covers the entire span, and then it has a beautiful little curve up here at the top. Really subtle, very noticeable though, and it's very, very nicely done. You've got an LED light that's hidden in there. You really only see it when you're charging, and you've got your earpiece up top as well. Uh, up top underneath the curved glass, we also have an eight megapixel front facing camera. Now on the back, this is where things get a little crazy. We have two cameras. One is your normal smartphone camera you've used a million times. The other is a wide 130 degree angle lens. And this is really cool for switching between kind of close up shots and then wide angle shots all in one phone. It's a really neat trick, especially when you start using it and get a feel for it. So we have the fingerprint sensor on the back. This is integrated into the power button, so it is clicky, but if you have your phone locked with your fingerprint, all you have to do is just lightly touch it and your phone will wake up and turn on. It's really simple and it's how I lock my phone now. Now this is a new phone and it has a new port to go along with it. If you haven't seen it yet, it's called USB-C. It's pretty new, not a lot of phones are using it yet, but it is the future. You get faster data and it's reversible, so you can plug it in either way. You don't have to worry about getting that little plug perfect every time. So on the side here, we have your pretty typical volume buttons. Uh, the only different thing about this one is if you double press volume down very quickly when the phone is off, it will launch the camera. Up top we have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and we also have the infrared port so yes you can still use your phone as a TV remote. On the other side we have your SIM tray. Now it's not just a SIM tray this time around, LG still has expandable storage. It's all bundled up in here nice and neat up to two terabytes via a micro SD card, but no adoptable storage. That's that marshmallow feature that lets the system look at all the storage just as one big partition. So there's been a good bit of discussion about what this phone is actually made of. Everything you read from LG will say, it's a metal phone, it's made of metal, it's got a metal body, it's a unibody, and it is. But the thing is, when you pick it up, it doesn't really feel like metal. It's not that cold metallic touch you get on other metal phones. What LG has done is taken that metal body, it's a metal frame, there's primer and paint on top of that, and that's how they've actually hidden a lot of the antennas here. While you don't see antenna lines all around the sides of the phone and cutting through the back, it's hidden underneath that. So with all that paint and primer on top of metal, things flex, especially when you're taking modules in and out. Now you're not gonna do that a whole lot, but you're still gonna do it. We've actually already seen one discrepancy pop up here. We've got paint that is sort of chipped and flexed and peeling off a little bit, doesn't really seem like it's dented or anything, but it is a cause for concern. And that's one of those things we're gonna have to look out for as we use this phone over time, over a period of months, and as more people get it. So one of the big changes with the G5 is in the user interface. This is their new UX 5.0 UI. And the big change is that it doesn't have an app drawer. You just have page after page of apps. Now that's not to say that you can't put any other launcher on it. Of course you can. You can install anything from Google Play that you want, or, if you just have to have something from LG and you just have to have an app drawer, you can install LG's Home UX 4.0. This is from LG's Smart World app, which is their own app store, and it looks thusly. This is a throwback. This is old school LG launcher, and it, in fact, has an app drawer. So one of the things you have to deal with with these phones is bloatware, especially when you get them from the US carriers. Now, T-Mobile has a whole bunch of apps on here already. It's got its own sort of a caller ID app, which is fairly annoying, especially because you only get a week's worth of trial out of it before they want to charge you. There are actually a whole bunch of features that LG has kind of tucked away in this phone. They're not on by default. One of those is the always on display, which is not on by default, even though it was sort of a tentpole feature when they announced the phone. There are also some smart settings tucked away in the settings menu. This is where, say, you come home, your phone will automatically connect to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or just whatever you want to set it to do. You've got a whole bunch of options here. They're all off by default, though, and you're going to have to go looking for them if you want to use them. One other 
place uh, LG could kind of work on things is the notification area here. You can see the quick settings still take up a lot of room. Now you can edit them to your liking. You can kill the brightness and volume and screen sharing and file sharing, and that will get you some of the space back. But Google still does this better than just about everybody else, and we'd like to see LG and others maybe address that. So another software feature that you might want to think about replacing is LG's keyboard. It's okay, it's functional, the buttons are fairly big, but the secondary buttons, the secondary functions when you long press are really hard to see. And the prediction just has not been all that great for me. So I'll definitely be using another keyboard on this phone. We have four gigabytes of RAM built into this, and that along with the Snapdragon 820 processor keeps things running pretty smoothly. So the Snapdragon 820 processor in the G5 is actually brand new, and not a lot of phones are running this yet and it's really their next generation processor. They're talking a 2x increase in battery and performance improvements and gaming improvements as well. So you're gonna get some really good graphics out of this thing. So let's talk about one of my favorite parts of this phone and that is the camera. We actually have two cameras on the back. You've got a wide angle lens and your sort of normal smartphone shooter. The wide angle does a lower resolution. Normal camera goes all the way up to 16 megapixels so you've got plenty of resolution to work with. You have several modes in the camera app itself. One takes sort of a picture in picture sort of thing where the wide angle is in the background and the normal camera is in the foreground and it's a little artsy, it's a little fun. You have another mode that will actually cycle through three different modes. So you've got your wide angle, your normal, and then your selfie and then just combine them all into one picture. And that's kind of fun. And then you have what's maybe my favorite feature of this entire Friends ecosystem and that is the 360 degree Cam 360, and it's actually sitting here in front of me right now filming us in Times Square in 360 degrees. You control it with your smartphone, you can control it with the G5, it's built in to the Friends app and we'll start downloading everything. Or you can run it on any other Android smartphone, LG has a dedicated app in Google Play, or on iOS, so it does work on the iPhone as well. And that's super important these days and really cool to see. Once you take those 360 degree videos and pictures, by the way, it will do stills, then you can post them to Facebook, you can post them to YouTube. It's $200, it charges with USB-C and takes a micro SD card, so it's really flexible, it's a lot of fun, and definitely something you should check out. Now, LG has always done really well with its still photography in the past two, three, four versions of its phones. There's a lot to like with video here as well. You have time-lapse, you have slow-mo, but the new feature this time around are some film filters. So this is supposed to give everything an old school sort of look. And you've got a whole bunch to choose from, maybe too many, but it's a lot of fun. And you can just flip through them, see them live as you're shooting. And if you actually don't know what film and photography is, go ask your parents, kids. This is LG Cam Plus. This is the camera grip. Once you pop it on, you have physical controls to go along with the camera app, so you're not just pecking at the screen. Also serves as a little bit of a grip, although it's not really ergonomic. There's a dedicated spring-loaded button here for launching the camera app. You have a scroll wheel for zooming in and out. It's a little tough to get to, but it works great once you do, and it easily moves between the normal camera and the wide lens camera. You have a dual-stage shutter button, so half press focuses, full press takes the picture, and then you have a dedicated video button up here. You just push it and it will start taking video. And there's a 1200 milliamp hour battery tucked into this not very ergonomic grip, so you do get a little extra battery when you're using the Cam Plus module. So the second module we have available is this. It's called Hi-Fi Plus with Bang & Olufsen, and like the name suggests, it's got B&O technology in it. This is a high fidelity audio module. It gives you 32-bit sound coming out of this headphone jack on this end of the phone now instead of up top. It's crisper, it's clear, it's a digital to analog converter. And this module works outside the phone as well. So you can run audio out from anything running lollipop and up that supports audio over USB. You plug USB into one end of the module, you still run headphones out the other end, and then the module works with any other device. It's a pretty sweet trick. So battery life, we'll call it adequate. You've got a 28 100 milliamp hour battery in the G5. And remember that it's removable. That's a big feature for LG. They haven't taken that away yet. So even if it doesn't quite last you all day, you can swap in a fresh battery whenever you need to. If that's still not good enough, this has Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3.0. It'll go from full dead to about 60% in only about half an hour. And just a little bit longer will fill it up completely. So that's a pretty big differentiator. So that's it for the LG G5. It is an imperfect but unconventional phone. There's a lot to have fun with here, but there's a good little bit that LG probably needs to work on as well. And we don't know what's gonna happen with all these modules. Are they gonna be around in a year? Are they going to work in next year's phone? Or is it just a one-off? We're gonna have to wait and see on that one. For now, the LG G5, that's it. We'll see ya.